Hi guys, welcome. Um, let's talk about following our dreams today, shall we? Just, you know, mild topic here about following our dreams and taking over our businesses in that leadership mindset. We're gonna talk about fully stepping into your leadership role, taking charge of your agency, being intentional about growing your business. So I'm sharing eight of my best tips for taking on that role as the CEO, the leader, the founder of your company with strength, with confidence, so you can grow and scale your agency, the agency you dreamed of. So number one, let yourself be the expert. I say this all the time. We always wanna make our clients happy, but they're not always right. They can come up with an idea of what they think they need or how things work, but when it comes down to it, the efforts um, are going, those things are probably going to lead them in the wrong direction. And so if you're listening to a prospective client or a current client, even, um, to what they want, what their wishes are, what they think they need, and you start hearing alarm bells, don't ignore them. Again, when those instincts kick, you want to take it as a sign to model your expertise, show your potential client what you can truly do for them, that you know how things work, um, you know that the goals that they have, the outcomes and, and objectives that they're seeking are not going to be met by that approach that they're proposing. So um, instead of just being like, mm -hmm, you know, nodding along with your prospective client, explain why that approach isn't the best plan for the brand. I mean, you can always say it in a positive way, showing, you know, walk them through what you'd actually do, not giving away the full strategy, give them enough guidance and expert knowledge to show that you know your stuff, to show that they can trust you and step into your authority and give them that expert input. And number two, don't be afraid to say no. Everything you do in your business builds momentum. And each client that you take on helps grow that expertise, establishes your authority in that niche. So if you're heading down a path you don't like, it's going to be really hard to step away um, years down the line. So only say yes to an opportunity that you really want to be doing because when you go down a path, even one step in that stepping stone path, you're building results, you're building relationships, you're building industry know-how that's kind of useless to you as you build your business. So only say yes to these opportunities and clients that excite you, that are aligned with your niche. Um, you know, if it doesn't interest you and you don't think it's worthy, like how are you gonna convince the media? You know, you don't say yes just to get the work, take a stand for yourself and say no. You know, of course it's hard to turn down work, but what's the point of saying yes to something that is taking you on a path in the wrong direction or that you're going to regret? When you don't go down these paths that ultimately aren't the direction you wanna build your business in, you are intentionally building and saying yes to opportunities that will align with your long-term vision and passion for your agency. It's also a way to love the work you're doing long term. Three is say goodbye to a reactive mindset. Um, a reactive mindset is powerful and it'll keep you from fully stepping into your leadership role and taking your agency to that next level. Because when you're stuck in this reactive mindset, you are just re responding to what comes your way. Um, no pushback, no boundaries, um, responding to emails all hours, um, taking any client work, um, you're fearful of losing the client. So you're like, yes, we can do that. We can take, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll do it. No extra fee, like, mm, we got you. And um, maybe these things that are coming your way, you're like, well, it's guaranteed revenue. So I should be feeling grateful for the opportunity. You know, maybe it's a client niche you hate. Sure, like, you know, money's money. Or projects that are maybe completely out of your expertise, you're like, I'll be fine, I'll figure it out. Or if it is a total pain in the ass client that ruins your days and you're like, I'll handle it, it'll be fine. Once they work with me, they're gonna 
simmer down. That's no way to run your agency. You have to get out of a reactive mindset ASAP. It doesn't matter if you offer the service they're interested in, if they're not the right fit, you're still the one in charge and you make the final decision on that partnership. A lot of times we think like, oh, the client gets to choose us. We're just as much choosing the clients. You're gonna be working so intimately with these companies, their you know, marketing people, the founders, whomever your point of contact is. You get to decide. You can be intentional in your leadership role and start taking a proactive approach to bringing new clients into your agency. Four, know your value. Um, your value as an agency owner is far more important than this kind of simple dollars for hours calculation. Charging an hourly rate for your services, just know it's going to trap you at your current level. It is discounting the expertise, the contacts, the niche understanding you have no more dollars for hours there are only so many hours in a day and when you limit your earning potential in this way you're never going to make it to your next revenue milestone and continue to grow your agency it's just not possible because in order to make more money you have to work more i want to work less and make more switch over join me in the retainer pricing revolution this is the system you need to implement in your business if you aren't already. With retainer pricing, your fee encompasses everything you do, not specific tasks and not how long it takes, but um, you know, it doesn't put a stopping point on the potential that you have. Retainers allow you to provide the best service and retainers attract premium clients with premium budgets. Number five, getting into a flow state in your leadership role. This is like agency owner nirvana. This is where it all comes together. Like you're just humming along. When you're in this flow state, you work in a niche you love, collaborate with clients that you really believe in, that you have a passion for. You're executing um, work for them. I say projects, you know, anything, services. You are in your zone of genius right? Like where time just feels like it's flying by because you love what you're doing and you're able to get into that deep work. And I've t coached tons of agency owners who felt that getting into a flow state was kind of impossible or didn't resonate with them. Sometimes it takes some undoing of how you have established things to work towards this approach. So getting into this flow state ditch those limiting beliefs, step into a better, healthier agency owner mindset, and get rid of that kind of reactive mindset. Be proactive in building your business. Get out of that day-to-day -day execution and work on the things you love and delegate the rest. Um, being your own advocate when clients push for bad ideas or unrealistic expectations or don't treat you appropriately. Push back. Let go of false narratives that are dictating your worth and charge your true value, you know? And a lot of the narratives um, are your own limiting beliefs around money and putting that limiting belief on a client. Believe in yourself and know that when you're in the leadership role, um, you know, you, you, you're meant to be there, okay? Um, six, you got to deep dive and develop that niche expertise. So a lot of newbie agency owners will think that they have to offer more services and they have to work with as many types of clients as possible because that means more opportunities are going to come their way. But that anybody who's been here for any amount of time knows that that is not true and it's actually the complete opposite. Niche expertise and really focused offerings are what is going to seal the deal with top tier clients. Your dream clients, they want to get the best opportunity. They want the best representative, the expert in their space, and they'll pay a premium, right? This is why you get better clients because you charge more and they have the budget to work with anyone.
and you're like, I am the go-to. I know this space. I know who the players are. You don't have to pick just one niche. You can pursue a few. Um, that's okay. But as long as you're really passionate about them and this is how we do it. We work with baby and kids, beauty and cosmetics, and lifestyle. It's tended to lean more like health and wellness, gifts. But despite working in all of these different niches, multiple industries, my team and I, we've established our agency generation as the go-to experts. Number seven, I have two more for you. Um, fully step into your greatness, no matter how long that you have been running your agency, I know that imposter syndrome can swoop in and leave you doubting your abilities. And I feel it sometimes too. Um, and this is a reframe that really works is that you should know that imposter syndrome will strike. You'll feel it. It'll rear its ugly head when you're on the cusp of something great, when you're expanding. And it's a sign that you're growing, being in a new role, new position, new level. It will come with some discomfort and fear. So think about a reframe on your view of imposter syndrome. But the last tip I have for you, these instincts, you have to follow your instincts. The other part of this is recognizing that you have them, you know, acknowledging that those gut feelings, that's instinct that is there to protect you. It is there to serve you and you should not ignore it and pay attention to it and realize that there's something there to guide you in a certain direction. So if you meet with a potential client and you immediately see red flags, that's an instinct. That is your intuition speaking to you and you should always listen to it. Doesn't mean you have to 100% follow it, but pay attention to it. Your intuition is what keeps you on the right track and it leads you to the opportunities that you are meant to have and it might also protect you from the opportunities that were not meant for you. Following your instincts, that's a big part of running your business. It's a big key in success in your business, especially in those early stages, because a lot of times you're just figuring things out as you go. I'm going to quickly recap the eight things, how to fully step into your leadership role. Let yourself be the expert that you are. Say no. Don't be afraid to say no when something isn't aligned. Say goodbye to a reactive mindset. Be strategic and proactive. Know your value. Don't discount your value for multiple reasons. Um, try to work towards <laughs> a flow state in your leadership role as you're running your business. You want to dive deep and develop a niche expertise so you're the go-to authority. Embrace and fully step into your greatness and follow those instincts. That's it for me. Um, <laughs> good to see you. Have a great rest of your week, and I'll see you soon. Bye.